ಸರ್ವೋಪನಿಷದೋ ಗಾವೋ ದುಗ್ಧಗೋಪಾಲನಂದನ ಪಾರ್ಥೋವತ್ಸ ಸುಧೀರ್ಭೋಕ್ತ ದುಗ್ಧ ಗೀತಾಮೃತ ಮಹತ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಏತ್ ಲಕ್ಷರ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಗವದ್ಗೀತಾ ಲಕ್ಷರ್ ಸೀರೀಸ್ ಟುಡೇ ವರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಟಾಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಸಾಂಖ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಸಾಂಖ್ಯ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಟೀಚ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ್ ದ ವೇ ಟು ಸೀ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಒನ್ ಇನ್ ಇಟ್ ನಾ ಆಸ್ ವಿ ಎಂಟರ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ದಿಸ್ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಐ ವಾಂಟ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೋರಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಫಿಫ್ತ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟು ಆಫ್ ದ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತ್ ದೇರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಬೈ ದ ನೇಮ್ ಆಫ್ ರಹುಗಣ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ ರಹುಗಣ್ ವಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಗೋ ಮೀಟ್ ಕಪಿಲ್ ಮುನಿ ಇನ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಆಶ್ರಮ್ ಹಿ ಆರ್ ಅ ಪ್ಯಾಲಕ್ವಿನ್ and he had four people who were tasked with carrying each of the four sides of the palaquin he needed four strong people but on the day he was leaving one of the four fell sick he told the other three to go and find a fourth person to carry him they found a fourth person lying on the side of the road physically he was very strong he looked able to do it that man's name was jadbharat they told jadbharat that the king has to go to kapil muni's ashram and you have to help carry him Jadbharat didn't say anything. He got up and he started to carry the palaquin. But Jadbharat was an enlightened soul. He understood the difference between body and soul. He understood that after death there is life. And so he was very cautious about where he was putting his foot. He didn't want to step on any ants or insects on the ground. So as he would walk, he would take little jumps to avoid any insects. And every time he would jump, it would shake the palaquin and every time the palaquin would shake king rahugan inside would also shake he didn't like this so once or twice he sent out a message whoever shaking stop shaking walk in a straight line he sent this message out two three times but jadbharat didn't change eventually the king was so upset he put his head out of the curtain he saw jadbharat and he said now if you don't walk in a straight line i'm going to have you killed and jadbharat started to laugh a direct threat on his life but jadbharat started to laugh and this vexed the king even more rahugan asked jadbharat why are you laughing and jadbharat started to talk to the king he said that this entire world that we're walking on right now is made of dirt and on top of this big pile of dirt that we call the earth there are these two piles of dirt which people call legs And on top of these two piles of dirt, there is another pile of dirt called my body. Attached to that pile of dirt are two piles of dirt called arms. And on one part of that dirt called the shoulder, there's another piece of dirt called the palaquin. And in that palaquin, that big pile of dirt lies another piece of dirt called the king. And that one pile of dirt is telling another pile of dirt that I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to kill you. And that's what I'm laughing at. Matika bhed nirala. If everything is dirt, from beginning to end, then why should I be afraid? I'm not afraid of anything, let alone death. Rahugan Raja, the king, was so impressed by this knowledge, he realized that I'm going to meet Kapil Muni to become enlightened, but I'm meeting someone here who's enlightened and can give me this knowledge. He realized that everything in this world, physical, that we see is temporary, is made of dirt. Pramukh Swami Maharaj was in one metropolitan city. And a few of the devotees requested Pramukh Swami, we want to go take you to see a tourist attraction nearby. Pramukh Swami, despite countless travels throughout the entire world, never took interest in seeing any tourist attractions. But when the devotees were trying to press Swami to come, Swami asked them a very important question. Swami said, what is this place? They said, is this building? Swami said, what is that building made out of? The devotee said it's made out of glass, concrete, dirt, stones, steel. And Swami at that time said, in India, we also have buildings made out of glass and concrete, dirt, stone and steel. In America, in England, in Africa, in Australia, everywhere in the world, every building is made out of the same materials. In some places, the buildings are bigger and some places they're smaller. But in the end, it's just bigger piles of dirt and smaller piles of dirt. I have no interest in seeing anything outside of God. Sankhya Gnan is teaching us how we should see the world. Because when we see the world as it should be seen, all of our priorities automatically change. For example, let me ask you a question. When you pass away, what are you? Are you what's left or are you what is left? Again, are you what is left or what has left? 
Are you what is here or what leaves? Or have you never even thought about it until now? Right? So you understand that you're not what remains. You're what leaves. But now the second question. You know that, and despite that, what do you do all of this work for? What do we do overtime for? What do we strive for? All of the work that we do every day, what is it for? For what's left or for what leaves? If you went to work every day and your salary went to your neighbor, would you go to work the next day? In the same way, we're doing all of this work for something that's not going to come with us. Sankhik Nand teaches about priorities. One of the main topics that Krishna Bhagwan tells Arjun, he says that you need to understand life and death. And you need to understand how long you are here in it. Whenever we talk about death, we fear it. We can talk about death in an academic way, but not in a personal way. When we were studying years ago in Sarangpur, one of my teachers, he was speaking to the class. And while he was speaking to the class, he actually started to cry. And then while he was crying, he quoted the Srimad Bhagavad Gita, a couplet that I'm going to quote a few moments from now. Jatasya hi druho mrutyu. He quoted this shlok from the Bhagavad Gita and he said, I know every word in it. And I've said it a thousand times. I've even discoursed on it hundreds of times. But yet, a few years ago after my wife passed away, I still can't get over her loss. I can't get over the fact that I lost someone that I loved. Now, my teacher was in his 80s. His wife was also in her 80s. This was eventually going to happen. It had been years since his wife had passed. But when death became a personal topic for him, he was unable to understand this wisdom. Words and wisdom are two separate things. Krishna Bhagwan is going to tell, talk to Arjun today on a very personal level and explain to him your role in this world and how to understand the other people who are in this battlefield with you. The first thing Krishna Bhagwan tells Arjun is Avyakta Dini Bhutani, Vyakta Madhyani Bharata, Avyakta Nidanan Neva, Tatra Ka Paridevana. Everything and everyone you see around you. A hundred years ago, they didn't exist, and a hundred years from now, they won't exist. Everything in front of you right now is merely temporary. And yet, you're holding on to the temporary as if it's going to last forever. In the Mahabharata, there's one incident when the five Pandas were exiled into the forest. At that time, Yudhishthir sent one of the brothers to go get water from the river. But when he went to the river, he was put under a spell by a forest dweller named Yaksh. Since that brother didn't come back, Yudhishthir sent another brother, a third brother, a fourth brother. Eventually, Yudhishthir went at the end, wondering where his four brothers had gone and why none of them had come back. When Yaksh and Yudhishthir meet each other, Yaksh tells Yudhishthir that I've put all of your four brothers under a spell. I'll revive them under one condition. Yudhishthir says what? Yaksh says, I have a hundred questions for you. And if you can answer my 100 questions properly, then I'll revive your brothers. And in those 100 questions, one of the questions that Yaksh asked Yudhishthir, Yaksh asked him, Kim Ashcharyam? What's something miraculous about the world? Now, there are many miracles that he could have spoken about, but at that time, Yudhishthir tells Yaksh, Ahani, Ahani, Bhutani, Gachanti, Yamalayam, Sheshaha, Stiratvam, Ichanti, Kim Ashcharyam, Utaparam. Every day, we see millions of people pass away. And yet, everyone who's left feels that they'll be here forever. Now, what's more of a miracle than that? The fact that we've gone to hundreds of funerals, perhaps, or watched them. We know that. We know what to say at a funeral. But yet, after the funeral is over, we don't feel any different in our lives. We never think that we'll be there one day. That's the miracle. On the opposite side, sometimes we think, no, even if we pass, there are certain things that are going to be here forever. A diamond is forever. But remember the other side of that argument. Even if a diamond is forever, we're not forever. Even if the outside world, some of the things outlast us, it doesn't matter because we'll never be here to enjoy it. And the second piece of knowledge in Sankhya that Krishna Bhagwan gives to Arjun is the couple that I mentioned previously Krishna Bhagwan tells Arjun, Jatasya hi dhruva mrutyu. Dhruvam janma mrutasya cha. Everything that is born dies. And everything that dies is reborn. Tasmat apariharyarthe natvam shochitu marhasi. Tasmat means therefore. 
The first two lines of this shlok, Jata se hi dhrovo murtyu. That's science. Everything that is born dies and everything that dies is reborn. That's science. But turning science into satsang, turning science into spirituality, that's what Krishna Bhagavan does with the second half of this shlok when he says tasma. Therefore, because of this scientific principle, there are certain things in your life that you can never change. And those things that you cannot change are not worth you worrying about. Not worth you being coming sad about. And when Krishna Bhagavan gives this, he's saying that you can no longer give excuses for certain things. You can no longer say, I am the way I am because you are the way you are. You cannot change the other person. You can only change yourself. You cannot change the fact that everyone must die. You can only adapt to it. Death is guaranteed. The timing is not. You can run from life, but you cannot run from death. So now accept it. And now work towards it. Understand it. Death is about letting go. And it's about understanding the fact that one day all of this ends. And because all of it ends, appreciate what you have right now. We go on vacations and we really enjoy those three or four days of vacation because we know that in a few days it's over and we have to come back to our regular day-to-day -day lives. Sometimes we go to nice tourist locations and if you ask a local if they've been to certain areas, they'll say, no, I haven't been to this building or to this location because they live there forever. They don't see an end date. But because we have an end date in mind, we can utilize every moment. In the same way, learning about death, thinking about death, understanding that this life will end, will help us value and appreciate and take the most out of every moment of our life. So how do we imbibe this? The senior swamis explained to us that we have to practice this thought on a regular basis. Visualize our death. So I want to go on a personal exercise with you today where we visualize our own death, not somebody else's, a very personal experience. All of us today, I want you to think right now, imagine that you've passed away and see your dead body from an outside perspective. See yourself sleeping in your bed, gone. You're in your home, but you're dead. And around your bed are your family and friends. What are they saying? They're talking amongst each other. They're asking each other, when are you going to burn the body, cremate it? When are you going to bury the body? When are you going to take out the body? All of these people who are talking about burying you, burning you, these aren't your enemies. These aren't the people that you had problems with in your life. No, these are your friends and family. And now when they talk about you, they're talking about burning and burying. And then everyone decides perhaps that they're going to do the funeral the next day. So now your body will stay at home for one night. Your spouse tells her friends and family, she says, I want you to stay with me at night tonight. Why? I don't want to be alone with him. You've been alone with him for 40 years. What's different about today? But now he's dead. While you were alive, there was no issue. But the moment you're gone, now nobody wants to be alone with you. Yavad kushalam putchati gehe. While you're alive, that's when people are interested in you and taking care of you and asking you how you are. But the moment you pass away, nobody wants to be alone with you. And then the next day, they put you onto a palaquin or they carry you on their shoulders. And in India, it's what's called a smashan yatra. It's a procession. They take you out. They say for every man who's alive on this earth, in Hindu dharma, they get two processions. One when they get married and the second when they pass away. And then there's some people who joke that they're both one and the same. That's for you to decide. Now, in that last procession, as you're leaving, you're dead. But everyone else around you is saying, Ram Bolo Bhai Ram. Chant the Lord's name. Chant the Lord's name. Everyone is saying God's name. Except for one person. You. If you had said it while you were alive, then you're safe. You'll go to heaven. But if you haven't said it while you're alive, then it's too late now. It's too late. And then they take you to the funeral. In India, even today, open funeral pyres. They put you on a stack of wood. And they light you on fire. And your body burns. Watch your body burn. The first thing to go, your hair. All of that time that you spent shampooing it. All of that time, all of that money you spent taking care of it, getting it cut. Your skin, all of those creams, all of those makeups, everything that you spent behind it. Your entire body, gone in a minute. Burnt, reduced to ash. Your bones, muscles, everything is gone. And after an hour, your friends and family gather whatever ash is left over. Three to four pounds of ash. 
When you were born, three pounds of flesh, and when you pass, three pounds of ash. No net profit. Doesn't matter how long you live on this earth. There is a question that people constantly ask. They ask, how much did this person leave behind when he passed away? How much will this person leave behind when they pass away? They're talking about the millionaires and the billionaires of society, but it doesn't matter who they are. Every person, whether he's a billionaire or he's a monk, every person leaves behind the same amount when they pass away. Everyone leaves behind everything. You cannot take anything with you. Everything is gone. And then people cry because they miss you. And we feel good knowing that people are going to miss us. But for how long? How long are they going to miss us? Wait a few days. Now imagine yourself. Look at your own family from within a picture in your house. Are they still sad? After a few days, they're going to move on. Right now, every one of you listening to this has a grandparent or a great-grandparent who's passed away and you're doing just fine without them. In the same way, your grandkids are going to do just fine without you. It's a hard pill, a bitter pill to swallow, but it's the absolute truth that the world will go on without us. We have to understand that there is no point of crying for those who have passed. In the Ramayana, there's a story where Ramchandra Bhagavan liberates Vali. And after he releases Vali from his uh, mortal body, Vali's wife Tara, she's very upset. And she's crying next to the dead body of her husband. Tara is crying next to the dead body of her husband. Ramchandra Bhagwan feels at the beginning, let me give her some time. So he waits. And he waits a little longer. And she just keeps crying and crying and crying. And eventually what happens is a person cries and cries and cries and then they run out of energy and then they stop. So Ramchandra Bhagwan thought, okay, she's done. But she was just building up more energy. <gasps> and then she started again. And then Ramchandra Bhagwan looked at his watch. He said, I'm in a bit of a rush. I've got a very tight deadline. I've got to finish a lot of work in 14 years. So he stops Tara from crying. And he says, look, let me ask you a question. What are you crying for? And Tara says, what do you mean, what am I crying for? My husband has passed away. My husband has passed away and that's what I'm crying for. And then Ramchandra Bhagavan says, Chiti jala pavaka gagana samira, pancha rachit ati adhama sharira, pragata so tanu tava age sova, jiva nitya, my question to you is this. You're saying your husband has passed away, but this physical body has not passed. It's right in front of you. And that which has gone away, that soul has not passed either. It's gone to heaven. So that which has passed has not gone away, and that which has gone away has never passed. What are you crying for exactly? How long are you going to keep crying for this? And in one couplet from the Ramcharit Manas, Tara realizes her mistake. If I'm crying for his body, his body hasn't gone anywhere. And if I'm crying for his soul, well, his soul hasn't died. So why am I crying in the first place? In the same way, when someone in our family passes away, why would we cry? We might feel that we've lost something, but understand that they've gone to a better place. They've gone to God's abode. If we're traveling from America, say I'm in New Jersey and I'm driving to New York, and it's a two-hour road, it's a two-hour distance. Who's the luckiest person? The person who gets there in an hour? The person who gets there in an hour and a half? The person who gets there in two hours? Or the person who takes 10 hours to get there? The luckiest person is the person who gets there first. In the same way, we all have one goal to reach God's home. Luckier is the person who reaches there before everyone else. It's all about just changing our paradigm, shifting the way we see the world. Life and death, these two things are guaranteed. Understanding death helps us appreciate life. And that's why Krishna Bhagavan in the second chapter of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita emphasizes this point to Arjun. Okay, Arjun, everyone, you, me, everyone on this battlefield will die. So now understanding the value of your life, let's start living it. To end today's session, there's an important quote that I want to remember from E.M. Foster where he says, death destroys a man, but the idea of death can save him. When we actually pass away, our life is over. But when we understand that we will pass away, that's when our life actually can start to begin. With that, I pray that we can imbibe this Sankhya this knowledge about the world and death into our lives. Astu.